Welcome to Self Perfected. Is one fifty? Why? Okay. All right. I'm here. Okay. Now, why was one sixty eight afraid of one sixty seven? I don't. I don't know why. Because or no? Why was yeah? Because one sixty seven, one sixty eight, one sixty nine. The fuck. I don't know if it. I don't know if it works like that. I think it's just seven no. eight. <laughs> you ever heard that joke? I heard that joke. No, not, that, that, was that, that, not like that. That was like a. No. That was a Why very, was six yeah. afraid of seven? Because seven eight nine. Yeah, that one. Yeah. See what you said did not make any sense. I'm just setting the tone. Oh well, <laughs> you're gonna hear a lot of shitty jokes today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? An attempt. Uh, well, not no, much, Christine. You're staying on, eh? Oh, look at that. Well, I just hey. wanted to say one thing. Oh, my mom called me yesterday, and she uh-huh. said, "She said, Christine, guess what we're selling at Costco." And I was like, "What?" She's like, "Gold bars," and I was like, "Really?" And she's like, "Yeah," like, and people were coming and asking, "Like, are you selling the gold bars?" And she's like, "I don't know what's happening, but this is weird." <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you Costco is selling gold bars. Costco is selling gold bars. Hey, wow. 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 Oh. 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 What was that? I, it broke some glass. What was it? We're carrying a glass. Oh, hey, Cindy, move away from that. Okay. Look at this uh, awesome fridge toast Max made. Awesome. Nice. Nice. That's great, bud. That is that. Max size. Yeah. I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to mute myself and help clean up that glass real quick, and then we'll, I'll come back. All right. Sounds good. Great. That's so, wait. wait. Christine, you're saying at Costco, they're selling gold bars. They're selling gold bars. So you know how we watch all those like videos about finance, you know, like some sort of like finance guru. And they're always like, hey, you should buy precious metals. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? You can buy your precious metals at Costco. So so the significance of that is, Mitch, hey, by the way, can you guys hear me or am I, is my mic low? A little low. What if I do this? We want to hear that full richness. How about now? How about now? Better? Sounds no. exactly the same. It sounds exactly the same. You know, the- you know what? I'll play around with it for a little bit. But anyway, the significance of it is this. You've heard of like all the, um, oh, how about now? Hmm? How about now? How about now? Ooh. Yeah? Ooh. yeah? Are, are yeah. we hitting? Yeah, is that good? My eardrums. Mm, yeah. Reverberate right, those away, eardrums. Drake. I'm out. Okay. See ya. Bye, Christine. See you, God. Yeah. She's just in the other room. She's <laughs> not that far. <laughs> um, but uh, no, no. Okay. You, you see all those videos of like people like going into panic or whatever, like prepper, you know, videos. Or uh, a, a really good example is Tim Pool. He's always like, buy your, I don't know, meal prep for the next 300 days. Because you never know when, you know, shit's going to hit the fan or whatever, right? And it's like now you can see to what extent like the, the mind consciousness is, is going where it's like when Costco is selling gold bars, which apparently they weren't doing before, which I'm like, how big are these gold bars that they're selling at Costco? And, yeah, and do you get know. a bulk discount on them? Do you get There's a bulk gotta discount? Be. There's got to be. It's Costco, right? How like, do they not have it? Yeah. You got you to gotta be saving some money. Like, <laughs> But like Costco, the place where you go to buy like you know, 300 pounds of cereal for for 10 bucks. Whoa, or whatever. whoa, 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 whoa. Do you not go to Costco? <laughs> I've been to Costco. Oh, let me tell you the story. Let me tell you the story. I went to Costco once within the last month or two or whatever. Okay. Um, and, and you're, you're somewhat regular. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I don't often uh, go. Like the okay. time that I went before that was like, uh, I don't know, a year ago or something like that, basically. Oh. And it was it was with Christine. So she was guiding me around. Um, but anyway, I don't have a Costco membership. Christine has a Costco membership. I think that's important to note because- Is it transferable the, from Canadian what? Costco to this? Is it transferable from Canadian Costco to American it Costco? It is, it is, it is. Seamless, okay. okay. But, but here's the thing. So um, ever since obviously we had the baby, Christine's not been able to go to Costco. So she like Instacarts it, you know? Mm. Oh, you can so, Instacart Costco. You can Instacart Costco. Now, Ooh. the only issue with Instacarting Costco is- I hate going in Costco. 
Me too. Unless Me I'm too. in the right mind state where I'm like, I'm just going to go appreciate the chaos. Otherwise, it is overwhelming. But Jessica is a... Jessica's Women like... Women like Costco. Yeah, yeah. But what I don't understand is how they know how to navigate Costco. There's like some kind of logic to it. Like I know where the fruit is. I know where the dog food is because, you know, we get our dog food from there because otherwise, you know. I don't know. Blowing I don't know. All your money I, on China. Chinese people, you know, China owns Costco. Do they really? Yeah. Uh, I did not know that. In China, See, they have dog food there too, but it's a little bit like kind dog of dog it's, food. It's, so, okay. Like you have I, dog I, food? <laughs> 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 I, I'm not like these kind of stores, like because my grandmother used to take us to Sam's Club. We used to go there all the time because we had a, a business that required us to buy lots of food in bulk. Anyway, um, so Sam's Club or BJ, I, I've just had a disdain for them ever since I was a child. But anyway, so what we've been doing sounds like is, you need to do some writing on that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Christine's been ordering. <laughs> the like the costco through instacart the only problem is they charge more for every item and they charge you delivery fee and it's it's just like ah okay what i might as well have just gone to public store whatever. you're not really getting savings um anyway so the other day she's like hey can you just go to costco not the other day it was like a month ago i went there and um got all the stuff that she put on the shopping list i'm standing in line doing the self-checkout she's like you got to go to self-checkout because the card's under my name or whatever i'm like yeah okay whatever no problem i'm in the self-checkout and literally a lady comes up to me she's like let me see your card and i was like it's right here she's like let me see that the other side where it's got the image because it has an image on it right so I, you know i flash it to her real quick and she like takes it and she's like studying it she's like who is christine <laughs> and i was like that's my wife <laughs> and she's like and uh do you have your own card? I'm like, no, this is my wife. This is my wife's card. Like I, she's got a baby at home. We're not going to come into Costco. Like it doesn't make sense. I'm her husband. I'm going to like, we do Instacart all the time. That doesn't seem to be a problem. Like, what I'm is this husband. communist China? Yeah. Right. And she's yeah, like, okay. Mm-hmm. One to 10. How combative is it getting at this point? Uh, it, it's getting like a solid six, solid Ooh, six. I could tell when she saw like the picture five, and she was like, who is this woman? You should have been like, first of all, how dare you? <laughs> that's me <laughs> it's ma'am <laughs> and, and she's like well i don't know i don't we're not going to be able to allow you to buy this stuff and hey I'm like, you know what would have been funny next time you do this uh-huh. wear a wig hey. <laughs> like put on some women's clothing and wear a wig see i'm trying to get the black guy to put a dress on wait this is like a whole the yeah, Dave Chappelle situation. This is how yeah, we get yeah, famous, yeah. guys. This is yeah. how. Uh, I have something about that Dave Chappelle. Remind me. Remind me later. But like, anyway, she pulls me off to the side. So I've been standing in line. It's a long ass line too. She pulls me off to the side, and she's like, "I gotta talk to the to the manager." And like, she goes over, and I see her talking to some guy, and she's like, mm. and "They're like pointing at me and all this." And I was like, "I'm hitting up Christine. I'm like, can you send me like a picture of you with the baby? Or like, can you tell these people?" You got to like, FaceTime her. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, like, what, like, can we do something about this? Like, they're seriously not gonna let me back. The lady comes back over and she's like, can't do it. I was like, what the fuck? You can't do it. She's like, can't do it. But you know, um, you know, since it's just food, you're not buying anything else. I'll let you do it this one time, but don't come back. Don't come back unless you're gonna buy your own card. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, <laughs> but that's so, not really how it works, is it? Or do you I have to have like know. a family thing or something? I don't know. Like, I, like supposedly I'm supposed to be on the card. Yeah. Um, and since I'm not, she's like, can't. She's like, gotta oh, card we got something. a 1017, code 1017. <laughs> we got a co- guy co- pretending like it's his wife's card. Like, it's never got There's a black man in Costco <laughs> trying to buy some food on his wife's card. We know he doesn't have We a got wife. a black man trying to pay for something in here, everybody. <laughs> you're, you're like how about i just... come back and steal it and they're like cool yeah, Hashtag yeah there you BLM. Go. do that <laughs> yeah hashtag california no we, we were just watching um on that note we were just watching uh owen benjamin's special right? oh yeah yeah Is and uh yeah yeah it was like within the last like month or so and uh he he has this line where he's like you know he's like you know 
it's not as bad as they're making it out to be, you know, like people want it to be really, really bad. It's not that bad. He's like, you know, like I had a truther friend. He was telling me about like AI and, and robots taking over cashiers jobs and everything. He's like, you know what though? In California, they brought the cashiers back. You want to know why? Because they didn't count on, they didn't count on all the looters coming in. They didn't count on that. Right. So, so they brought the cashiers back. And I told him, look, in California, they brought the cashiers back. He, he didn't want to hear it. He was like, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> he wants things to be bad. Yeah. So that's funny. Yeah. yeah. But um, I, what I was going to say about Dave Chappelle is this. And then I'll, I'll let you guys have the thought. What I was going to say is, you know how Dave Chappelle talks about that story with Iceberg Slim, the pink, right? And, and like he's using that to describe the situation that he was in with Comedy Central, right? Or at least that's what he says, is that, and for those of you who don't know the story, it's basically, um, he tells this story of the pimp who uh, has his main hoe. <laughs> I'm just going to use the correct vocabulary. Here. I have a main hoe. I, I mean, I have also like, I have a side hoe also. It just depends like which garden I'm working in because we have the big one. I usually use them. So broke my hoe. I had a bitch? used hoe and I broke my you hoe. You have a broken hoe? Yeah. Did you beat so the hoe got, around and like just slam I it around? I got it used. And... Oh, you got a used <laughs> hoe. And I was I was digging. Yeah. And it broke. Well, see, that that's that's what this You got to get a new hoe, man. Got to get, I'm telling you. Just, that's what this pimp was afraid of. His, <laughs> his main hoe was gonna break on him. That's that's what he could see happening. He's like, "Yep, it's it's time that this hoe is it's gonna be broken very soon." And so, He's in order to force. get exactly, in order to get some more mileage out of his hoe, what he decided to do was uh, put together this this one last job that she needed to do. That's what he told me. He's like, "Hey, listen, I know." You're leaving me soon. This, you know, we're coming to our end here, but I just need one last job from you. And what he did was he had her go meet with this guy at a motel room. She goes, and he's like, but he's got a lot of money. This guy has a lot of money. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to steal from him. So you're just going to put some of this stuff in his drink. He's going to just knock out. And then um, you just take his briefcase, should be filled with money, should be hidden somewhere in his room. And then we, we hightail it out of here, right? And so she goes, she sleeps with this guy. She drops whatever drops in his drink and he knocks out. But then he like, seems really like, what's that word? Cata catatonic? No, that's still like, sleeping. But he seems like dead anyway. So it's she gave like, him a catatonic? She gave him a catatonic. There you go. Got a tonic water? He got a tonic water. And so then he didn't get COVID. That's a joke for wow wow not, that's anyway. how we get our the, next uh, drink, really. yeah that's, yeah exactly that's how we get our next drink. so then <laughs> so then anyway um because he fucked her she, with a mask on <laughs> that's what happened that. that's what actually happened so wow. she calls the pimp she's like hey uh something's off like i found the briefcase but this guy he's like he's not moving at all you said he was just gonna go to sleep and the pimp comes over and he's like oh no you killed him like you, how much did you put? You put way too much. And she's like, no, I did exactly what you said. He's like, no, 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 you killed him. So then he's like, all right, let's look at the briefcase. There's all the money. It's like, good, but we got to make this go away. So he calls his carpet guy. The carpet guy comes. He rolls the guy up in a carpet, puts him away. He gives the guy some money. The guy goes away and he calls other people, whatever. Um, apparently the guy's dead. And now this woman's like, oh, I am so sorry about that. He's like, yeah. We're gonna have to lay low for a while. You can't leave me. Um, so you're just gonna have to keep working with me for a little while longer until this all blows over. And she's like, yeah, keep me safe. And she feels really connected to him. So Dave Chappelle tells that story in um, kind of connection with why did he leave Hollywood and go off to Africa for you know that time when he was super, super popular. And then all of a sudden he apparently, what was said in the news was, um, went crazy all that yeah went crazy started smoking crack or went to africa to go buy crack or something like that he's like because he, he couldn't get it in california right right like if i wanted crack i could just go down the street like i don't have to go to fucking africa for that shit <laughs> but it was making me think of 
this is really how the media is treating the first world right now. You know, where it's to the extent where it's like making everything just so crazy, so over the top, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, 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 oh yeah, th- this is why we need, you know, some more uh, stability in our government. We, we, we need, you know, the government to take control over everything. And, also, and- it's why you need to watch the news. You it's know, it's like, keep paying attention. Come on, come on back. We got some good stuff. You know, it's like they were like, oh, the, the news ratings are going to go down whenever Trump's gone because they won't have a Trump. And then just like everything gets crazier. Of course, if you follow our podcast, we predicted everything. Of course. Of course. We were telling you about the climate change stuff that they were going to do, um, which is they're so, it's so funny. I, I saw a picture of um, uh, a news anchor, literally the same news anchor from 11 years ago, talking about the weather and like you see the the you know how you see the weather and it's got all the numbers and everything and it shows like red for hot or whatever and the whole map is green and then it shows that same news anchor standing next to the same map the same numbers the whole map is red and it's just like and the, the headline at the bottom is like climate change is boiling over like it, it's just like Oh, literally nothing has changed except for the story, right? It, yeah. it, it's that's where we're at. And so that's what's going on at Costco is like all of a sudden now they're selling the, the gold bars at Costco because they've got everybody into a frenzy of like, go buy gold, go buy toilet paper. You know, and China's like, got plenty of gold, I'm sure. And they're like, we'll give a little bit away. Yeah, Just yeah. sell a little <laughs> bit off. Hey, hey, Mitch, where are you at? No, the book that you're reading. Mm. I'm at the part. I'm like at, what page, roughly? Uh, you know? I don't know, 200, around 200. Okay, so we're, we're, we're roughly around the same place, I'm thinking. Yeah, I found, um, a, I found a very fascinating one idea that's really like come through is where they're, okay, without giving any spoiler alert, which at a certain point. Fuck it, dude, I spoil every book and people still okay, read it. Okay, okay. <laughs> they talk dude. about crashing the internet so that the so that the internet is is like it's shown that the internet cannot be trusted because it's just a bunch of you know not just crashing it like flooding it with a bunch of bullshit so that you're like i don't trust it but then what were you gonna say after that yeah but so then they talk about there's like some newer network something with crypto whatever like i i haven't got that far but then the one of the main dudes who's apparently behind that but he's like no the crazy part about the doing that whole point with the internet so people don't trust it is that they were like People still don't care. It's like they 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 didn't care. They still just believe everything. Yeah. yeah. They, and yeah, I gotta yeah, say, yeah. I, I'm willing to admit my mistakes. All right. It's pretty fucking good book. I'm like, this is a good book, man. This is really good. We're talking is, about right? Fall or Dodge and Hell by Neil Stevenson. It yeah. is pretty and I'm like 220 pages in. And it's like yeah. this is it's like a, I think it's like almost a thousand page book. It's but I'm like, yeah, this is good. Nice, nice. I'm glad I like it. it. But you know what, though? Like, I was telling kids, I don't know how to explain this, but every Neil Stevenson book I read to me feels like a different author. Mm. Like, not in a bad way, just like in a, if I didn't like one of his books or like, you know, it doesn't mean I can't read another one. You know, it, it like if I read uh, I don't know, Snow I don't Crash know. or Diamond Age in yeah. this book, they just yeah. see, even Cryptonomicon, it just seems very, it's like, I'm not saying it's a totally different, like you'd be like, what? I can't believe you wrote this. It's just, to me, it doesn't feel like I'm reading a similar, it's like, he's just kind of, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's just how I, I feel about it. It's just how I feel about it. Yeah, that's how you feel. Cause I don't know why you feel that way because he makes these little jokes in his books. Like his writing style is very much, no, what page, Christine? I'm asking what page are you on in the book? Um, but is, oh, is you thought you asked, she thought you asked if you were on if she was on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> are you on the same page? Yeah, are you on? You clearly, oh, she's way oh. you guys. Oh boy, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, she knows, she knows some lead. things I don't know. Go one up. <laughs> yeah, um, I only read but, it three nights, but the problem is I stayed up really late the other night. <laughs> Yeah, like I too late. That at the end of the chapter i'm like okay i'm just gonna start the next chapter and then i'm like halfway through i'm like oh man this is good yeah. i have to finish this chapter dude i stayed yeah. up one night like a, like a drug addict yeah like till like 4 a.m reading because like yeah she was like what are you doing and I'm like she like she woke up and she's like you're still awake and i'm like it's just so good i can't i can't yeah, it's one of those kind of books where you just want to keep reading it you're like another chapter and you get there and you're like i, mean, I, I can go a little further you know and yeah 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 and then it's I, definitely I good stop. and it's definitely 
it's cool too because like there's a point where he was talking about the prince the kids from princeton and they're mm-hmm. kind of like you know oh microaggression this and but he's not it's it's like he's not making fun of them but he's also not defending it at the same time it's more just yeah. like it's just a fact of how things are and yes. like even like the crazy i like how he calls the people who believe all the, the crazy stuff the crazy town like that's like yeah, the yeah. name for it right yeah. uh, i thought that was pretty cool um but yeah, it's interesting because he's really talking a lot about a lot of a lot of relevant stuff, and he's able to talk about stuff that's happening right now as if it's in the past. You know, yeah. like yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really cool. It's really yeah. Cool. yeah I love his commentary on it. Um, I'm reading right now uh, the robot series. So I'm I just finished Naked Sun. Yeah, that's after Caves of Steel. So I I read Caves of Steel. That's Naked the Sun. one where they go to Solaria. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I just finished that one. See, look at that. In the time <laughs> from the last podcast to now, I read two books. I'm on my third one now. Yeah. And you didn't I, study speed reading? And I did not study speed reading. I did not. Guys, I was <laughs> depressed. My life wasn't working out. And then I started reading speedily. And everything changed. No, so, that's not what happened. <laughs> so... Um, on that on that note about uh speed reading i don't know what i was gonna say about speed reading who cares about speed reading i don't know oh i just took you no, off track but you're talking about no, robots no 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 i remember what i was gonna say about speed reading go back to there asimov is... i like i want to no. <laughs> <laughs> wait let me tell you about speed reading you know in the uh in past sats um they have an article that talks about speed reading but it, it, it wasn't about speed reading it was about it was about oh it was about how technology could change um, the neural pathways in your brain or, or your attention span, essentially, right? And, and they had um, two articles, and one was talking about how it was one of these like comparison, you know, paragraphs in the SAT. And I always find this interesting how the SAT will do this. Well, they'll slip in some article about like um, women's rights or some article about, um, you know, technology or, or something like that to give you an idea about it, right? And um, one of the things was, so one article was- They actually use the SAT for propaganda. It's kind of crazy. It is. It's so clear. It's so fucking clear. Um, But anyway, but and it's so funny too, because like, it's like the kids are so focused on trying to get a good grade or get a good score or whatever, that they don't realize the unconscious acceptance of the propaganda. And so I'll be like- I remember studying with some kids and they're reading the SAT and they're like, oh, and they, they'll make these assumptions based on supporting women's rights. Like, oh, I know the the correct stance I'm supposed to have here. And then they'll like answer the questions based on that stance or they'll explain their answers or how they got to the answers based on that, that opinion of I'm supposed to say this for women's rights or say this for equality or whatever it is or it it, it, anyway the propaganda in this one was basically one article was saying um it's possible that um you your attention span can dwindle based on um you know technology and and watching a bunch of quick cuts and things like that and the other article was saying that is so ridiculous how silly is this? Like that, that would be like, you think if watching a video with a bunch of quick cuts turns your brain into thinking into quick cuts, that's like how ancient peoples used to think that um, eating certain animals would give them the qualities of that animal. Like if you ate a fierce animal, you'd become fierce like that animal. And it's just like so disparaging, yeah, right? That is what happens though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Well, so any, anyway, literally, why I eat lions <laughs> every day, <laughs> every day. It's re- literally why I eat bull balls, so I can have the balls of bulls. Have you ever tried? It? That, I mean, I don't know if I've ever tried bull. Have balls, Have either of you eaten much liver or organ meat? Oh boy, here Not we lately, go. No. Fucking organ meat. Oh my gosh! First time Organs- I had pr- proper organ meat was Cameron and I. What we killed two turkeys. Right, and you ate the did organ organ meat from that. Yeah, I I did. I saved it, and then I I ate it before I went to the airport. 
Yeah. Like ate it raw? Uh, no, not not raw. No, I I fried it in your pan. <laughs> this I remember, I like, this got real weird. Out. He's like, yeah, I saved. It. I ate it at the airport. <laughs> like, no, no. Okay, so I, I had never. This. I think that was the first time I ever killed a bird properly. Well, I don't understand. You took cooked liver with you to the airport? No, no, no. But before we left, we ate a meal before we went to the airport. I, I'm imagining you sitting like in the. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the gate. No, like no, smacking no. on turkey liver. Like, no, I had something. I don't know. But so we're traveling <laughs> back. But no, I, I I had the organ meat. I don't remember that at all. Yeah. Well, remember killing the two birds. We killed. Tom, I do remember that. And then that. We killed two birds yeah. with one stone. Yeah. And I had kept hearing about liver king, liver meat. I was like, you know what? I've never actually had like quality organs like that. We we sometimes get liver from the neighbor who's got you know the cow. But we had we had we had a uh, organ meat goat organ meat at your place. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. That was before that, you wasn't eat it? that, you eat that, you definitely feel different. Like, I don't remember that. Mm. Well, y'all gotta try some liver. I Do you have any, Cameron, at, at your place from uh, any of the butchering you've done recently? Um, organ meats. Oh, we definitely have like chicken livers. Nice. I would think. I'm sure I have a bag of like hearts and livers and stuff that we kept because mm. I mean, we killed 40 something, 50 chickens. And That's good. You don't That's like to keep all that. Mm. Yeah. But I feel like we have like a whole bag full of like livers and hearts. I'm telling you, that stuff is a game changer. If you incorporate that in your diet, you just have to find a way because it does not taste good. The foodie and Drake would not like it. Maybe there's a way to prepare it, but I'm telling no, you. No, I've looked into day. like, every I've looked into have... making liver taste good and I don't know if there is. Exactly. Have you ever heard of that chess so, opening called the fried liver defense? Oh, yeah, actually. Or maybe it's an attack. I'm not sure. Yeah. Fried liver you know, attack. I, I wouldn't fried really liver. fried it because I had, I literally ate a bunch of organ meat from these turkeys because I was like, this is, I'm just going to experiment with this, right? But when it's cooked, it's like, it's pretty nasty. You have to just like eat it. But what we do is uh, Jess will take like a liver, she'll dice it up really tiny, and then we put it in the freezer, and then you have like little cubes of it straight up. You see Pedro eat it. It's like, what do you do with the cubes? You just eat them raw. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like, I'll have it with. Uh, <laughs> Look at that. Can blend it into a meal in my yeah. face. <laughs> we okay. The like, reason why I don't know. I thought eating raw eggs was weird before until I realized I've eaten raw eggs my whole fucking life. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> raw milk, which we got to get to that because that that'll be an upgrade. We'll have raw milk in our diet, but we got the raw that'll liver. I'm telling you, you have it's because it's so nutrient dense. That's why. And right now, most people are nutrient deprived. So you're not getting like magnesium, iron, copper, all this stuff. So it's in there. But you eat a bunch of it, you like feel different. I'm telling you guys. Missing out if you don't have- I'm skeptical, but I was skeptical about fall. And well, and were, were you skeptical about raw milk it's when you first got a cow? And I also need to ask you some lessons because- I really you know, wasn't, no, I don't remember being skeptical about it. I was more were, like, I couldn't skeptical. digest milk. You were skeptical about raw milk. It was more of a before. lactose intolerance. Yeah. Point. Yeah, 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 but it before. wasn't. I don't think it was like the maybe like way before I would have been skeptical about raw milk. Yeah, but it's so crazy Katie, when you think about it. Like, you know, was what? Katie pushing getting the the cow in the milk <coughs> much more than you, or did you know oh, you to get it? Yeah, she knows how to sell. Cam, I'm okay. not. Jess sold me on it too, and now we got a cow, Airshire, right? I was. <laughs> I'm not gonna show a picture because I'll let you guys do that. But I took a picture of your cow with looking at all of our cows and I was gonna send it to you guys of like here's how it starts <laughs> then here's yeah. how you here, here's yeah. a year later or two years yeah. later you got like um, four cows yeah. actually you bought two cows technically technically yeah so we got a pregnant cow camera picked it up how would you rate the cow Cameron from what you see oh Good amazing cow. Yeah. great yeah. Awesome. beautiful big I figured because yeah Katie she helped us and we she knows this cow broker and so her and Jess have been chatting Really, for the past like year about this. I mean, when did you get your cows, Cam? Do you remember the first one you got when you became Katie, my, cow owner? If, I don't know if Katie's listening; she would know. I would guess mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. I mean, Ma the baby Maple. She's not a baby anymore. She's like a year old, I think. So probably, I would guess a year and a half at the most. I'm thinking, but I, but I could be wrong. Was it honey? Was it honey? Your first cow? Yeah. We got her. She was pregnant. She's a heifer. Or heifer. She's a Jersey cow. Uh, she gave birth to a Jersey, full Jersey 
I think that. that one's A2A2 also. I could be wrong. Katie would know. And then we went and bought a... Katie, Katie says one and a half years ago. And she said, Mitch is right about uh, ground hearts and liver and ground chicken and gravy. It's delicious. Okay. Right. Okay. The best way to do it would be have a meat processor. We don't have one yet. You know, just something that can mix it. And then you'd have like, like burgers. Grinder? I guess, yeah, meat, meat grinder, I think. I don't know. Put in some sausage or something. Yeah, or you just put it in burgers. But it's like 10% organ meat. The rest is burger, so you don't taste it. But like, you definitely feel it. I have a corn grinder. A corn grinder for for what feed? Or what? I think I bought it for um, clay or something. I don't remember why I got it. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Oh, so it makes oh. like cornmeal. Yeah, but I I feel like I got it because we were doing like making our own clay and stuff. But I don't remember. Yeah, okay. interesting. <laughs> It, it was funny. So I haven't yes, used it. <laughs> yes, yesterday we had uh, one of our meetups and um, Pe Pedro runs it. It's more like a, a public meetup. And he opened it with just, hey, what's everyone's wins recently? And for me, I was like, wow, you know, you got the homesteading one. I had two wins. One was uh, uh, we got our cow secured and the other was we got our chicken coop insulated. So now I don't have to think about it at all because like where we live, it gets fucking cold <laughs> so you need oh insulated. you insulated it what did you how did you insulate it well i insulated it last year it was when i was going to texas it finally was like oh in the next week it's gonna get really fucking cold here and jess had just had aristotle <laughs> so i had to wake up at like 3 a.m before i went to the airport <laughs> insulate this chicken coop with like uh it's like that foam insulation and then blankets over it but now <laughs> we insulated this Hi. one with proper Hi guys. Um, hey, Max, yeah. with proper like, fiberglass everything it looks amazing, except it looks kind of like we Hello. use like this plywood over it. I don't even know what it is, some sort of plastic plywood type thing. So, but okay. those chicken, it's like chicken paradise out there. What's, What's up, up Max? Maximus? How you doing? Chicken paradise? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and Jessica had to insulate our chicken coop because it gets very cold. And when there's cold wind coming through the chicken coop, it can. It isn't very it. cold actually here. Yeah. How cold is it there? Mm. Right now it's not bad. Today's like oh, today's forty five. Oh, that's pretty nice. It's been it's been about twenty five the past few nights. So it's been amazing. <laughs> what I know right now, this is a podcast. We are on yes. the podcast. Yeah, so we're recording. That's what I want. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yep. We're recording, so and we're and we're live on Facebook, and we're recording to repurpose it later onto the Apple Podcast. Mm -hmm. We'll upload it later. The recording. I want to show you one of the fastest techniques in chess using the stock fish engine so that maybe some of the people who are watching this might understand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just That's like, an option. Because, yeah. Well, let's have a How next. long do you think you need for that? Uh, like five minutes? As long as I could stay in here after that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just thinking we don't want to just only talk about chess all the time again. Right. Yep, Max, what I would like to hear is, are you reading any good books lately? And do you want to tell us? Oh, about you're asking me that. Talk about that first. I've been reading King Arthur. It's the oh. best ever. Turn off this air King Arthur, which which it's... version? Because there's different different books with King Arthur as the character. Which one are you reading? It's like the original King Arthur book, like you know, like when with like the late like New Moon, Lady of the Lake in it. Galahad. Do you know who the author is? No. Sure, we, we could look it up. Then. It's like the original. Yeah. Because I was looking for the original, and there's like two or three that are debated as like the main one. Oh, yeah. I don't know how original from that perspective, but it's yeah. like classic stuff. It's not like some other version. Yeah, that's cool. It's got like Lancelot. It's got like Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, I think. There's no Green Knight. It doesn't have that story in it? No. Maybe that's not part of that. That has the are black. You, are you reading any other science fiction ones too? I'm. I started yeah. iRobot. I'm reading it to Aristotle. I'm not reading any science fiction right now. Mm. So now, can I show you the quickest meet? I'm trying to figure yeah, out this. Just... Mitch, uh, I, I was thinking. Yeah. Maybe you should log into chess.com, Mitch. No, we'll just do Stockfish. No, no, I was just suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do that. We, we'll. We'll strategize on chess, Max, but I want to... You I can have him do the move. There's yeah. something I'm busy with, which is doing this. You see, I'm going to explain. So, I can see you also, the quickest mate in chess, I 
think is this. So Max, is that always the best opening? Would you say in general, the first one you did? Because pe people watching this don't even really know openings. That is the fastest made ever. Oh, I didn't even know about that one. Wait, wait, how many? How fast? Is that? Actually, how many moves? Three Actually, moves. Watch out. Three moves. I thought. I thought. I thought, I thought it was two. Well, your opponent gets two moves. So this, you as white have three moves. You did three. That that's called the fool's me. Oh, I didn't even know about that one. Okay, you want to show us the uh, scholars, mate? Sure. Nice. Nice. You know how I like to block scholars, mate? I'll, I'll show you that. I'll, so, Actually, I would leave that there. So you know what? You know what? And then I would probably no, no, do no, this. No, no, I'm going to show you what I do. I'll show you. See, we're going to go back. Let, let, I want to show you how black can win if white, if white plays incorrectly. As queen is obviously just going to go over here and make random moves for white. White queen, white queen goes here, does some rent. Where he, where the bishop could have taken the queen, but she takes the pawn instead. I don't know why, but then he does that, and he takes the rook and takes down the move. Can you find? Actually, it's made in two for black. Can you find it? Yeah. Queen takes f two check. King d one. And then she, queen down? Or no, oh. Actually, no. And actually, you know what it is? It's that. White, white hat, why is moving bishop back to some random piece? Then he takes that. White moves pawn. And can you find the winning for white? It's just that move. Queen f1, check. Do that. Bishop b4, check. He has to move here. I don't think it was a mate. Check. Yeah. King moves here. Moves there. Moves there. Still Check. not going to be mate. He's still, he's slowly forcing him to go to the head of the board. <laughs> okay, now you're just playing. <laughs> 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 it's a very creative mate. <laughs> I can't take it there. Uh, That's like if the white person is playing all the worst possible moves. Yeah, only the worst possible moves. <laughs> that, take, that can't be. <laughs> I think so. It's okay. I know you're just looking. You're just looking like... All right, Maxie, we're going to stop now. Okay. Fine. Okay. So thanks for showing us that, though. I didn't know about the fool's mate. Now I know. So now I won't be a fool. That's cool, Max. I'm looking forward to seeing. I want to see you and Drake play each other. I heard. I heard that you played That's Drake. Great. Oh yeah, and I beat him at Builder Gears. Yeah. Oh, like plus five, and they just. Checked we were out. watching. I, we went reviewed your game with Drake, and I saw like the point where you lost because you were up so much, and then there was this one blunder. But if you had, there was another move you had made, which was like, if you had done that one, it would have been like. Hey, hey, Max. Max, at what point do you predict you'll be able to beat Drake? Like just beat him no matter what. Like he can't. Yeah. Like you're truly better than Drake. At what point? He'll just be like straight up better than him. Um. Uh. Oh, I've got an idea. Here, paychess.com. No, we're not gonna do that. Not, not <laughs> He's like in five minutes. How about that? <laughs> what, what? Yeah. What would you predict, Max? Like the rate at which you're developing is very impressive. And my rating is ten seventy five. I don't think that's your actual rating though, because that's my cascade.com rating. Yeah, yeah, I know. But but there's a lot of reasons why I think it's not your I won't go into them now. I don't think it's your actual. Well, that'll be cool, Max. I will be rooting for you to be Drake in Texas. I want to see this. Yeah. The day Drake loses. <laughs> You're like the best player out of the group, right? When you say Drake. I don't know. That's Drake's mistake. You can beat Katie though, right? 
Yeah. I can be Katie, yes. Okay, because Katie's really good. Katie <laughs> like, I cannot even fathom. But I can be Katie. Level. Oh, can... wait, really? Yeah. I can be Katie. Uh, well, let me put it this way. I have beaten her once. Oh, okay. I have beaten her. <laughs> well, well, it's the only time we've, hold on, it's, only, it's the first time we've played each other Yeah. in, like, when did we live in Portland? 2008? 15 years? Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah. So oh. I, I, we literally have not played chess in like probably between 10 to 15 years. So, mm. and that I, was I remember in day, Houston. Huh? I remember in Houston watching Drake and Katie play a few times. And I was like, I, I was barely like following the game of why they were doing what they were doing. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool. You know, it's fun. So I remember we played David, Mayor, you know. Oh, Mayor's, is Mayor good, Drake? uh mayor's okay okay i don't mayor's think he okay. knows like, <laughs> he's just good at like kind of he's he's very of, intuitive he's a very intuitive yeah, i think it's more like that mm. yeah like so if he studied he'd probably be pretty good yeah, yeah definitely yeah. yeah i have yet to develop like the chess intuition thing i don't you don't need intuition okay you just need reasoning ability yeah, to process exactly. a lot of it for, yeah it's like i don't have the vocabulary really down like obviously i have the basics but like skewer I kind of know that. And there's one other main, like. Fork? Yeah, yeah, I think it's fork. See. <laughs> but I could tell yeah, once yeah. you have that down, that is a, that is definitely next level. And I don't have the basic development down. All I know is you should generally control the, the middle of the board. But I could see, I'm sure that isn't always true. Yeah, I think if you probably, if you just do the lessons on, or was it the chess.com lessons? or I yeah, think I've I never done lessons on anything. But I would like yeah, to. Was, I think their lessons, you know the chess kid ones, are really good. Do you know what night G six means? Do I know what? Night G six. C six. Night C six. Yeah, just move it there. I'm are you just asking him? him? Oh, okay, okay. Oh no, Mitch does not know what that means. No. <laughs> that stuff yeah. where it's like they'd like say the names of the pieces and the movements and everything. And at first, I was just like, "What the hell?" But then you get used to it. So I took all the vocabulary. Mom! from uh the chess kids uh -huh. glossary and put it into my techno tutor and i did that for him yeah. too i did that like a year and a half ago but not not extensive vocabulary and i didn't really study it but i put it in all the things like a1 a2 you know e1 b2 etc because I, I could see how that changed a lot for me when i had all those symbols integrated that was yeah do you have you know you you know what i'm talking about drake yeah yeah like preloading the vocabulary into your techno tutor is night and day difference <laughs> that, that's how i learned chess i think i said that on the last podcast anyway yeah, yeah. well maybe you could that. highlight that like specifically how did using techno tutor help you with chess um because before that i didn't i wasn't good at chess i didn't understand the strategy at all mm -hmm. um i knew how the pieces move like most people you know i know how the pieces move but i don't understand all the rules i don't understand like the strategy why do people move pieces where they do all that stuff right and then what I did was basically I downloaded that app, right? The chess.com app. And then I started putting in all the vocabulary for chess. And then I started watching, you know, their, their lessons that they had on there. And I watched through those and I was like, oh, that's why this piece develops in this way or, or that way, that way, or that's why you want to do this or whatever. And then once I had that down, then I just started playing some games and then like, like Cam has said, you know, play a game and then like you get mated in four moves and you're like, the fuck? Like, and then it happens again and again and again. And you're like, okay, how the fuck do you stop this thing? Like, and then, and then you, you try to do it to somebody and then somebody like gets out of it and you're like, what? what? <laughs> yeah. How did, how, did, how did it not work? Like, I thought this was like a solid, like foolproof thing. And then um, you, you basically learn, okay, what is this thing called? And then you learn not to get, you know, mated by that anymore. Um, you learn to do it to other people. And you can look back. The other thing that I would do, which I think was really crucial, was looking back on the games that I played and, okay, what am I supposed to do here? Like, I didn't, This at this point, I didn't know what to do. What would have been the proper move? And then I, I'll see the proper move and I'm like, okay, but why? Why that? That doesn't make sense to me. That's not intuitive to me. That like and then I, I play it through until i can see oh that's why because if i did it any other way this is what would happen that's essentially yeah that's yeah i can just mindset. tell i've 
it, it, it's like you have to have a certain amount of accumulated knowledge to like really start to notice the effect. There's like a critical mass to it. And I can tell I'm on the way, but I haven't get that, but I know I will. It's just like it, on the list of my priorities in life, it's not up there, right. but I do see the value of, you know, one or two times on my lunch break throughout the week, just play a little 10 minute game. And I have found that things like that, where you can kind of break your pattern from like work is nice. It's just, it's like reading science fiction at night. It's like you have the mini day when you, you know, when it's your time to do that kind of thing, you do it. And I'm that's not, not great. like just when you have time, like during lunch or something, or then like in the evening when I'm done with work and everything, right. right. Max will usually be on my shoulder going, that's hey, a bad move. Hey, that that's such an important point. That idea of like, you have your time for work and then you have your time for these kind of things, you know, like finding that balance. Cause if there's not the balance, I don't know. It just, it just can go either way. Like you can have too yeah. much you're just playing. You're not yeah. creating anything or you're so focused on work where you just constantly stressed and so forth. So it's good to be able to do. Right. Well, right? and, and what I've noticed too, is having this homestead now, cause they're like, I have to have probably an hour a day to just look at homestead stuff. Cause when I do that, it actually adds to everything else. Right. Like people love coming over and like we do the chicken. Like when people come over for dinner and the sun's going down, I'm like I have to go do the, do the chicken choice. And I was like, at our clubhouse is like four, Four or five people like oh i'll help <laughs> how can i help it's, it's really fun and like we it's like it imagine if somebody came over and you're like i got to take out the trash and like five people are like oh i'll, I'll help you i'll help you i'll help you you're like <laughs> okay sure <laughs> yeah, it's funny yeah but anyway it's it's been it's been really cool to see that and now okay so now we have cow all right and this is this is well next now I have a Cameron cow. Cameron has a cow. That yeah. I'm holding. You got to still negotiate, you know. <laughs> you own it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so Cameron is housing our cow and baby cow. I still don't know if the baby's a male or female, um, but we will be able to get raw milk, what, after, how long did you say? 10 days after birth or two weeks? I think that's what Katie told me is like, you want to wait about 10 days before you start milking them because the baby needs everything. Yeah, that's cool though. And then she'll live so, in So we'll have some raw milk in about 10 days. Or well, hey, when they- hey. Drink up, enjoy it, because <laughs> then we'll be there, right in Texas. If it has the baby soon, we'll probably be able to do milking and stuff when out here. Yeah. Nice. Hey, nine days, I'll be in Texas. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. That yeah. Hey, that's another point too that I think is is cool to just touch on. So yesterday at, at the meetup, Pedro had a really cool discussion. He's like, "Hey, in sixty days, it's the new year. He's like, are you going to be ready for it, or are you going to be that person who waits until oh Christmas? Oh, I got to plan the new year. It's like, are you just already planning it?" So it's just proper like succession. So that's been cool too. So anyway, cool. we'll have raw milk. We got our chickens coop insulated. Like life is good here. But that'll be a whole thing, Cam. Soon enough, I'll have to come down to Texas. We do a transport trip. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll appear. Operation, move the cow. It'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be cool. cows, actually, probably. I mean, definitely two cows at that point. Hey, <laughs> hey, the other day, our neighbor. So our neighbor had like, he's got, I don't know, 30 some, 40 some cows. And he, he has a really cool operation. He's couple of houses away and every once in a while so we'll like kind of barter with him or like we buy stuff and i got my beef liver from him great beef liver <laughs> this this episode brought to you by liver.com <laughs> this episode brought okay, to you okay, by okay. costco no. get your beef liver here <laughs> get your beef liver in your gold costco. bars do not get beef liver from costco <laughs> but anyway our neighbor has six cattle in our back pasture he you know is just eating it down and just fertilizing it whatever and because uh, we told him like, hey, we got the cow secured. So he, he moved him out the other day. He got five of them in the trailer, no problem. But one did not want to go in. <laughs> one literally busts through the electric fence in the back, runs like half a mile down the road. Hey, <laughs> just, just the same. She's like, I, I, I remember why farmers are in such shape, good shape now. Because at one point her and Jess were like sprinting. <laughs> do, you, do you care if I play a video of your cow on here? Oh, go, go for okay. it. Let, okay. Let's show the people. The cow does uh-huh. not have a name yet. So if you want to give a name recommendation, you can leave a comment. It's transferring to my phone. It's a funny video. That's why I wanted to show it to you. Cool. Cause you're, I, I, I haven't seen much. Yeah. I haven't seen much for video, but I seen two pictures and she looks, she looks great. Exactly what we're looking for. Um, Ayrshire cow, not Jersey cow. Ayrshire. 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 I don't know how it's spelled. I've I don't know. It. it sounds like something from. It's a really pretty cow. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's see this cow. Let's see this chocolate milk cow. Yeah. You get soon enough, milk soon it, enough right? Drake and Christine will be homesteading too. I know that's in their plan. So are you going to get a cow too, Drake? 
uh, I think we might get a cow. Can we be practical? With we the, got cows, with dude. That, I'll get you a good dinner. deal on a cow, man. <laughs> you, want, you want cow? How many cow you want? You want? I give you all the cow. You, this is like the, the weirdest. Cow. This is like the weirdest, most wholesome cult ever. Yeah. yeah. You know, or like. Yeah. Hey, bro! Like I can actually, get you a cow. Like actually, care about. <laughs> <laughs> you could milk it yourself. Hey, do you want to play chess later? <laughs> you want to play chess later and read some sci-fi and milk our cows? Yeah, what book are you reading? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, no it must be some secret cult come on guys but it's like we're open uh, about everything or like here's all the stuff yesterday about um about you know just like some secret societies oh oh partly because well well we'll see later but also i i've been uh <laughs> if you haven't listened to that john question. taylor gato that john taylor gato interview, oh five hour all five I, hours. I'm I'm re-listening to it now. On repeat. That's one of those ones that are re, re that are worth re-listening. Oh, oh, oh no, it's, it's the whole it. thing about once or twice a day. There you go. <laughs> Just constantly <laughs> out in the background. Yeah, well, I think breaks. I think breaks to play chess. <laughs> it's it's a phenomenal interview. Um, but anyway, he talks about in there how um there are these groups, and it, it's so interesting because he even talks about like the religious schools that you know of are like the the some of the most well no all of the elite schools he says are religious schools he says they're not religious in the sense that like they actually have faith in whatever it is that they're supposed to be believing in it's like it's uh the way he describes it is they're doing some mental exercise about like what the heck was in god's mind when he created this uh like but he's like it's more of like a like a philosophical, like, like, like they're, they're like really trying to dissect what's going on here. Right. Anyway, he makes that point and he, he says, you know, one of the smallest religions was able to put um, two presidents in the white house. Right. And he's talking about the Quakers. Right. And he's talking about how, like, you know, you would, you're, if you look at the Quakers, what is your impression of them? Oh, you know, they're like, the fucking guy on the oatmeal, you know, <laughs> like, like they're, they're supposed to like be these really pious, um, nonviolent, uh, just like they have no ambitions or anything like that. They're just like, you know, here to go along with life. Right. And yet it's like, you look at Benjamin Franklin, like he was not, not ambitious. He was very ambitious. Oh, I was trying to remember who the fuck was I just hearing about was a Quaker. Uh, Elon Musk is a Quaker. Yeah, I, I'm like 99% well, sure. Okay. We need wait, no, 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 no. Fact no, no. check, fact, fact check, fact check. Elon Musk. Check. Wait, hold on, hold on. I got confused about South Africans. <laughs> Dave, Dave Matthews. <laughs> oh, Dave, Dave Matthews. Matthews. I, I was listening to, like, you know how like, it auto plays? And it started, I guess, because I was listening to Dave Matthews. It started auto hey. a uh, <laughs> documentary. And they were talking about when he's grown up in South Africa and his. Like in a Quaker thing, yeah. And then I, I didn't know he, he grew up in South Africa. Africa. Huh? That is very different than, um, than, you know. Elon Musk. Yeah, very different. <laughs> Dave Matthews. Uh, I um, can play that video. For we get yeah, go it. ahead, go ahead, play the video. That's this is just me picking it up. For Quaker. They're Quaker. friends. They're friends. Doctrine of the Inner Light. <laughs> So it's that brown and white one there. But uh, I'll just turn it down. It's just a bunch of noise. So I'll just wait for her to get it. But I'm going to skip forward. So she's just getting her into the pen. This part's really funny. There she is. Watch. <laughs> 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 I guess that's how she got in, right? Same way. In so in backwards. <laughs> like you're gonna go backwards? Okay. I was like, did you train her to do that? But then watch, <laughs> pretty smart cow. She goes through the shoot, and she's like, oh, I'll turn around and go in. <laughs> <laughs> that was all part of the plan. That's funny. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> awesome. She just goes right in. Cow. Oh, so cool. That's so, great. Yeah. Look at that. You got a good cow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that'll be fun. It's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. I, uh, anyway, 
wasn't finished. <laughs> wasn't finished. Back to your goddamn boring Quaker story. Well, actually, no, I was going to talk about a different uh, secret society, but apparently oh, yeah. one secret society has put, uh, okay, so th- this all relates to, to education, right, by the way, um, because- Now you've got my attention. <laughs> I guess we because, <laughs> well, because we already know, like, the history, but if you haven't, go watch that that documentary. It's really good. But the it's history funny. of education just in general, the John Taylor Gottlieb. Or not a documentary interview. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, um, where he talks about how our education system got started and how it's basically literally just to make sure that you all stay dumb. Everybody just stays dumb. That's that's the whole point of our current education now you're system. you're talking conspiracy theories. <laughs> well, if you knew how to read history. Well, he explains so well how people can't read. It wouldn't and, like, be a he's theory. very well read. And oh, and I got like oh. 20 of his books one time. When I first listened to it, I wrote down all those books and I have like PDFs and the it, as many real ones as I could find. There's some like you can't fucking find them. There's one called The Perfectibilists and it's about the origination of the Illuminati in Germany with the mm-hmm. whatever that guy's name is, Adam Weishaupt. And it like actually explains what is the Illuminati. And and he just is dropping all those like, so I just put it in the, uh, the podcast uh, comments in the Facebook group. Oh, awesome. And it, I, I have it bypassed the intro. The intro is fucking boring. It's just the other dude interviewing him, giving context. Like, if you want to listen to it, you, you can, but more just, I like, I mean, you get four and a half hours, five hours of John Taylor. He, got to do he tells this story. He tells this story that's really good. Um, when he was like, I think he says in third grade, he went to some religious school where like the nuns were beating him and stuff. And he was like, it, it, like I'm sure their hearts were in the right places. Hated that place, <laughs> whatever. But he's like, but I did, I did learn something. Their hearts were like probably in the right place, like right here, a little. Yeah, bit. it was probably like just a little bit left of center. I think that's where it's supposed to be. Anyway, um, but now he talks about how he had this one teacher who was giving the le- lecture, and it was the history teacher, and or I don't know if he was just teaching history, whatever. And he says, okay, I'm going to teach you um, the reasons for this war like why this war came about. And he had the reasons on the board and there were like five reasons. And uh, he says, does any student want to, you know, see how, how good they are at like understanding this? Do you want to show off and turn your back towards the board and recite what the reasons for this war are? And Don Taylor Gatto was like, you know, at that age, I had a great memory. I wanted to show off. I was like, yes. So he, he puts up his hand. He stands up, he turns to the back of the board, and he says, I got every word perfect. Like, I, I didn't miss a word of, um, you know, what what was supposed to be said, right? Or what was written on the board. And then he says, uh, he turns around, and when he turns around, the, the professor is la- as soon as he finishes his last line, the professor is laughing at him, and he turns around, and he sees that the professor has erased everything off the board, and he says, those aren't the reasons for the war, you idiot. These are. And there's five new things written up on them. And he says, now see if you can turn around and see if you can memorize these. Right? And so he turns around and he recites those perfectly. He's like, and, and this time I, I got it. I nailed it. I Like, I, you weren't going to throw me off. Right? He says, but this time, as soon as he finishes the last line, the entire class bursts out in laughter. And he says, he turns around. And this time, the professor erased everything. He says, those aren't the reasons either, you idiot. You can't learn the reasons because no one can just spoon feed you. Like, you have to actually go look at the source material. You have to go look at, like, what is actually said? What what happened here? What happened there? And put it together yourself. If somebody just hand feeds you, like, these are the reasons, that's bullshit, right? And he, he was learning this at third grade, right? And it... I, I just share that because is that how you learned history? <clears throat> no, we yeah. learned it the proper way where they spoon feed you the answers, Drake. Exactly. Exactly. Like, well, what does our uh, Pearson's chapter book, you know, textbook say about why the Civil War started and blah, blah, blah. And like, uh, According to Huffton Mifflin. Yeah. According, according to, to Dunder Mifflin. 
Yeah. Like, According to McGraw Texas. Hill. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fucking McGraw Hill. Scholastic. But, what even is Scholastic? Do you all have this Scholastic? Yeah, we have Scholastic, of course. What even is Scholastic? It's, it's just it's a, a it's just a company. company. It's a publisher that wants to sell bullshit to kids, so they make deals with the schools, and then everyone thinks they're promoting reading. It's just a bunch of fucking Pokemon and terrible bullshit. Yes, that's exactly what it is. A bunch of selling Pokemon like the third graders on underpants. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, not um, reading that. You know, you know. Okay, what if you like yeah, get the yeah. Scholastic and it's like. <clears throat> It's like Leviathan by by Hobbes and shit like that. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious because you know that, none that, of those kids. We'll make our own. We'll things. make our own version of that. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a good idea. We should create our own. We should have a book list that we curate. Okay, a book list, okay. and then we can have like you know the vlogs, things like that. Uh, so the fall blogs, is on that book out. list. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, seriously. Like, I mean, obviously you have the blogs and all that, but I'm saying like like reading like that kind of stuff um yeah let's do that okay so I'll, I'll, I'll start it we got follow so we got the isaac asimov we'll start with we could do a uh we could do like a google doc or something Blogs. <laughs> yeah i'll but i'll start it here so google yeah nice um what else was i gonna say oh are you talking about john taylor Gatto? yeah 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 because he was talking about like um basically how the history that we learn is complete bs like we're told that the reason for the civil war is x and then everyone's supposed to believe that. But if you actually go and look into the history of it, not what your textbook said or what your history teacher told you or any of that bullshit or the propaganda that they put on the SAT, it, if you actually go look at the real history, you're like, what? Everything that I was told makes no fucking sense. No fucking sense at all. It's like, it's, it's got to be a lie because it's so fucking against... <laughs> counter to the facts of life at that time so it made me look into some uh other secret societies because basically those secret societies had a huge hand in creating the education system that we have today but also because of that they don't send their kids to the same institutions or the same schools that they're sending everybody else to because they're like well no that, that's for you guys that's <laughs> We made that for you, the dumb ones. We don't do that. We do something completely different, right? And one of these societies has put three presidents in the White House, countless congressmen, like literally, like you'd be astounded by the amount of congressmen that are uh, members of the secret society before they became congressmen, uh, started FedEx, started american football like started, literally uh, this is all one blackstone as well started blackstone as well yep. was in there yeah exactly exactly blackstone you guys have heard of blackstone right you guys have heard of like the precursor oh, that one company <laughs> that literally owns yeah, they, or, well, they make that they make my griddle people what? know blackrock i think <laughs> well, less people know blackstone okay yeah based on yeah, what, yeah, the, yeah. what the media is putting out blackrock came from yeah. blackstone it was going to be rocks come from. <laughs> it was going to be pebble. It was going to be pebble. Yeah. <laughs> but literally like okay. Um that that should tell you something. That should tell you something really important. And and the the point that I'm making here is that you can't do it on your own. Like like what is the average person doing? The average person is not a part of any sort of like group or secret society because they don't want to be part of a hive mind they don't want to be part like they're afraid of what other people are going to think of them all that stuff right and they're just wandering on their own not even realizing they've been indoctrinated by some other group right and taught to to think in that way and and oh what are you taught in school oh you don't collaborate you're not allowed to collaborate that is cheating if you collaborate okay Okay, so don't even think about it because in the real world, mm -mm, that's not allowed, not allowed. And so you're, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm an individual. You have this idea of yourself as an individual. Okay, reading um, uh, Naked Sun, right? I was, I was sharing this point because it's, it's such a good point. We talk about it often, but it's that point of like, you know, the law of attraction. You're like, you only do things that make you feel good. 
right? But in, in this book, The Naked Sun, it's set in the future, whatever, and the people are on a planet where they've been conditioned so that they don't even want to like be in the same room or the same vicinity as someone else. Like you only do everything entire- through like three dimensional video conferencing. You're never right. Exactly. Even even present. walking outside is done through a three dimensional video conference. And so it's like, uh, so the moment somebody comes like says, "Hey, I'm going to be in your physical presence," they're like, oh, "What? Oh no, no, no! I can't. No, please, right?" And it's it's so interesting because it's like it's really clear to see that that's silly, right? Or or another character is like. Uh, I can't go outside, cannot go outside because I've been conditioned where I have to have these walls around me at all times. Like the sun. That's like, Elijah every, Bailey, right? Bailey, right? right? Yeah. Right. He's like, weird, he feels weirded out by like open sky. Right. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Blue you sky. You have to feel to understand that. Right, right, right. And so it's interesting because if you consider that, like look at that, it's like, that's really obviously silly. Clearly, you know, that's not natural. Yeah, it's like people major thinking, anxiety if it's like he's outside. He's like, Whoa. right. But but the people have been conditioned in that way, right? And it's like the whole society has been conditioned in that way where they're telling him, like, he's like, oh, you guys don't like see people in, in person. They're like, that is so gross. That's right. so weird. The, the entire society is like, we would never would stoop so low, right? But that's literally what's happened to all of us. If you If you've been in a school, that is what has happened to you. You've been conditioned in a way where you feel unconsciously an aversion towards anything that is like going to support your freedom. All right. right. So yes. support- oh, no, hey, hey Jess, what's up? How's it going? Look at that big boy. Look at that big boy behind you. I didn't know you guys had a three-year-old. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> hey, Harry. that's good. Um, that's the size of a three-year-old. Hey, hey, cow owner. You should see him. Y- yesterday we were at our office and we walked, uh, we went down two elevators, went up an elevator. I don't know. We walked for probably six, seven minutes and he could walk through the whole office complex with me. Like he was, he wouldn't fully keep going the whole time, but I just walked like three, four feet in front of him. He j- he like walked through a skyway. We like walked through atrium. It was so funny. He's walking nice. a lot. Like, he's almost, yeah. he's almost running as well. Yeah, it's amazing. Nice. And in Texas, he'll be around all the other kids and just really He's going to get the downloads. Yeah, it's going to be fun. What's up, What's up, new cow owner? Yeah, we're pretty excited about that. Yeah. So what's going on? Well, beyond everything Mitchell's shared, um, definitely a lot of movement locally with other moms, which is pretty oh, cool. exciting. I'm That's finding good. a lot of mom. I'm finding that moms are desperately looking for real connection. Like there's so many other women out there who simply want to gossip and complain. And don't you just hate those women? Like, come on, let's talk about them. (laughs) Seriously though, seriously though, like (laughs) they, I know what you mean though. People, people are, women are starting to wake up to the gossip culture yeah. and they're like, this is not productive in any way. Like complaining about other people, complaining about how they make you feel and talking about other people's lives. And I was actually listening to an e audio on gossip, which if anybody is around gossip at all in their lives, I highly recommend you go listen to it. It's actually free. The first one is free on e So you don't even have to pay for it. Like go, listen to it it's profound the way she talks about it and it just she brings through how it starts so early on like grade school middle school women just start talking really nasty things about other people whether it's their hair how they look how they dress how they talk like everything they just rip people apart and it's it's something that doesn't like it doesn't stop once you become an adult. Like it's something that it's a pattern that continues and continues and continues. It just might look slightly differently. Isn't that like basically the whole, like those housewife shows 
Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, like, that's, yeah. like, that's like, it's that like, and that's just like normal, like women relationships, right. In our, in our, right. in our world. And, Dude. and so there's lots of women who are just saying like, Hey, I'm, I'm looking for other moms who want to actually support each other to do something with their lives yeah. not just talk about other moms you know and they phrase it differently but like you can tell it's like they're sick of it so that's that's been really cool observation that i've seen in the last couple of weeks but well, they're cool. sick of it until they don't have it anymore and then their pattern takes over and then they're like hey hey <laughs> Do you want to just well, gossip? <laughs> hey, that's, Jess, that's cool this is really cool. Is like, all the things that you're sharing with me, like, you know, about the cows and everything, and I, <laughs> it, you know, like changing your education. That's really great. I love it. <laughs> but like, can I just talk about that bitch down the street, Jesse? <laughs> yeah. But it's cool because I'm at a point now where I can see that pattern pretty quickly. Mm. And like before the conversation dwells into that, it's like, yeah. I just redirect. Yeah. That's cool. Because yeah. now we didn't have the tools to be able to actually change those points. Because before it's like, oh yeah, I think part of it is like a, I mean, you can look up all the theory on it. It's like dominance games, group freaking dynamics. It's yeah. like so women yeah. need like an emotional release. They're like their self projections, all that kind of stuff. But so it's cool because there's so many women, like you're saying, out there that are looking for that alternative. But kind of like there's people looking for homesteading. But then you know you that guy, it and you're like, oh, how do I sustain this? Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you need Seriously. these. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you know that guy, um, Chris Williamson. He did an interview. British with, guy. Uh, yeah, the British guy, the young British guy. He did an interview with this woman. Um, actually, I think it was you, you sent it in the chat. I think um, uh, this woman talking about like in that one, she talked about dating older men or dating someone who's responsible, right? Single mom. But, yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. She did talk about single. Oh, I listened to this one. Okay, okay. So yeah. you know the the part. So I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I saw a clip of her talking about. Um, he said, "What do you think about?" Fuck. What did she say? Okay, so he was. Well, asking... Was it the point about the 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 older men point? No, 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 no. It wasn't that one. It was it was a different clip. It was okay. specifically about um, women. Um, oh, women being friends with guys. That's what it was. Yeah, um, you saw this right Jess yeah and, and like and so he he asked her like hey what do you think about like um women being friends with guys and she says well I think the the issue is basically that um women seek out guys as friends because with women being friends with women there's always this like competition or like a, a woman could be a friend of yours and at the same time your complete enemy but like you, you never know, like there's always this like underlying layer of like, you're yeah. unsure of, is this actually my friend? Whereas with a guy, a guy might like you, right? But like, you already know, like the guy likes me, like wholeheartedly likes me. That's why he keeps me around. It's not like a, like a, oh, I'm, I'm trying to like uh, get over on you or anything. If he likes you, he's probably trying to sleep with you, but that's okay. Like I can, I can deal with that. Versus they like, have to deal with the, like, they're trying to stab me in the back thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, what were your thoughts on that, Jess? It was it was funny because I grew up with guy friends. And so it's very mm. relatable. Because mm. I absolutely dis just despised the gossip and talking about other people. And it was mostly because I knew that I was an easy target for other women or other girls, where if I was within those dynamics of like say I joined a friend group of girls I would be the one that they talk about more the most of anyone I, I was so easy I was I was taller than everybody in my class until seventh grade I had size women's 12 shoe in fourth grade like I I was such an easy target and and I wasn't even good in school I, I didn't get good grades easily you know like all the things added up where I was and I was super tall and super skinny when I was young and uncoordinated. So just falling on my face and all of this. And so I knew that I did not wanted to, like from a deep down as a child, I just like in fourth grade one time, I literally 
told some girls off. I was like, you're obviously talking about me behind my back. I don't want to be a part of that. Like, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. And they were so hurt. And like, they go home and tell their mom. And I was like, I don't care. It's I just left their their little thing. And I really didn't have my group since then and sometimes I would gravitate towards other with other girls who kind of were in similar situations but generally generally I was around guys a lot and it was also interesting because I didn't really have a lot of guys looking at me romantically in high school either so uh, was, I thought you were going to say a fourth grade. I was going to be like, I would not have looked at you romantic. You tower <laughs> over me. <laughs> Your foot no. size is bigger than my whole arm. Like, <laughs> yeah. They started, they my started body getting taller than you. Yeah, I'd be like <laughs> just scurrying under your feet. Like, ah! <laughs> they, they started getting taller than me in seventh grade. Okay. I still um, wouldn't have been. Um, <laughs> I'm still not taller than you. Uh, there's very few people who are taller than you even There now. was only one or two people that were taller than me in seventh grade. By, the, by senior oh, year, I, I, I bet there was five, maybe 10, maybe 10. <laughs> in the whole state of Minnesota? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, in my class, in my class. <laughs> this is so funny. Anyways, so comedy aside, I 1000% can relate to the whole having more men as friends because of the toxicity of women. I, I was in college and my first apartment I lived in was with three other female athletes who all knew each other from high school, all lived in a similar small town. And I once, I once had to ask one of my roommates, I was like, why, like, are you aware that you're starting drama? You know, like, like, like actively like choosing to begin co conflict and she was like yes I love starting drama I love doing that and like so it's not only like some people they may not be aware that they're doing it but there are a lot of women out there who are they know what they're doing and they're Sweet. actively stirring the pot yeah they, they need to like they need to get a family and have kids and build a homestead and not focus on a bunch of bullshit because they get bored and they're like, I need some energy. And it's like, Oh, yeah. Let's start some shit with Becky over here. You know, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So that, that point was really, really cool when he was talking about that. And I know you brought up the men as friends point, but I, I thought it was even more interesting when she was talking about how women gravitate towards older men when mm. they don't have a stable relationship with their father growing up because yeah. They're looking for the stability and safety and security from the, the man. And once they have that baseline met, then they're no longer even interested in that man. But before that point, they're so infatuated with this person because it's like they've never felt that safe before in their life. And they confuse that with like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to feel in a relationship, like a romantic relationship. And oh, wow. so... That was, well, they want that somebody who can protect them and so forth and is mature so they don't go for the person their age but then when they get into that then they still want the excitement of the young guy so then they go and cheat on yeah. the dude with the other guy and the other oh, guy yeah. has this scheme so he takes them back and all this stuff and like oh yeah. yeah yeah and and in that dynamic like you think that the older man has the power but it's not it's the younger woman because she's manipulating him with oh being a young woman <laughs> women women always have the power they they just don't realize how much power they I have really think all of the stuff about the patriarchy is just women like spreading all of these conspiracy theories so that no one will put the blame on them like even <laughs> i'll just think about the wars and stuff it's probably like oh, some, yeah. some like prime minister's wife in russia or something is like did you see the way that bitch in ukraine looked at me like seriously though like, like that and so like these all these wars are just like women like doing you know you know actually actually we we know that wars have been started by women from antiquity because of helen helen started a whole fucking thing with like troy and i don't well, even the, know the, the, i i <laughs> in even more practical sense like it's definitely the women because 
if men aren't being like, if they don't have their baseline met, they'll just go figure it out. Women are like, it's like they're, it's not that they're fully dependent. Cause like, I know there's this whole feminist movement, but like on a deep down level, like say you have a child, like an infant, you're not in a position where you can go and actively work while still being 100% present with that infant. And so it's like, there's different stages where women literally are dependent on a man to provide that safety and security. So on a global scale, when women are being provided for, then that stirs up so like the instability that creates within a woman's life it is so much more irrational than a man. Like a man is like, okay, then I'll go get it. Even if it's not gotten in the best way with the women, it becomes like this manipulative, like war inner, like this inner war that creates an external war in the world. And mm. it's, it's very ugly, very, very ugly. Just like the external presentation of the instability within women, because women, they feel that negativity like seven times more than men. This has been founded that women experience the negativity way more and they're way more in tune with what's going on around them. Like if you throw a man in a situation where he has to consider the entire room and how to accommodate everybody in the room and all the things, it's very different than when a woman is in there accommodating a group of people just is what it is. And that's the same with our, even with animals, I, we find like when Mitchell's caring for the animals and when I care for the animals, Mitchell will make sure that they have food and water. <laughs> you know what, what I mean? Is. Yeah, right. He's probably in there like snuggling them in the little bit more. <laughs> so we were building, so when we were insulating the coop, I was out there um, with my dad at one point, just me and him. And one of the chickens was like, I want to be involved in this process <laughs> and it kept jumping up on the you're like can you use an impact driver <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it just kept it kept <laughs> jumping and getting in the way and getting in the bed of the truck and i was like well i don't want it to shit all over my dad's stuff in the bed of his truck so i'm like grabbing it so i just end up having to hold this chicken and it's then it's satisfied while i'm holding it so i'm i'm doing this this one-handed holding the chicken <laughs> and i'm just thinking like if if it was mitchell they would have just kept shooing this chicken away and it, it would not have been sufficient this chicken just needed to be held <laughs> but um and then it's like it's like when you when you look at the the war that women cause is also an externalization or it's more of like a the macro size of the the micro that they have between women so the war that they have between women, that's the gossiping and the competition and all of that that they have between each other, then get scaled out to the rest of the world. And so it's yeah. like, then it becomes my community against that community. And then it's like, that community is evil. And, and, and it's just like this. And men like to fight. So they're like, oh, you want me to fight? Sure. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. Which, which, one, which one did you say looked at you? That one over yeah. there? <laughs> it, it, it's yeah. funny because like that point of um the just that whole point of the women having this internal war or or actually needing to be reliant upon a man right because like that's actual physical reality of you have a baby um somebody has to provide you know some food shelter you know all, all, all of that right it's so interesting because in the context of what's going on today, what single moms do, they talk shit about men. And they're like, yeah, no, you don't want to be reliant upon a man, all, all well, that stuff. I saw a fucking post today, this morning, I uh, saw it beyond there, obviously. It was like, it was like someone sharing a post saying, stop judging single mothers. Most of them are good, faithful women who just fell into the hands of the wrong man. There you go. There you go. And I was like, I showed Katie. She was just like, <laughs> it's it's so interesting because like typically 
like you see this a lot, like you'll see this in movies um, with like where there's a single mom involved where but the who's mom- But judging or, them? Well, it, it's not- it's, but You know what I mean? Like this like- They're not stop, being judged though. Hey, stop judging single moms. You're like, who are you talking to? Well, you know what it is? You know what it is? They feel judged for one. And, and two- They're also judging themselves. Well, yeah, but it's obviously. like this, it's this, if someone says, hey, it's not best for children to have single parents, then they're like, stop judging me. I'm, I'm like, trying I'm my hardest. I'm about your kids. I'm not talking about you. Damn right. it. <laughs> right. But, but here's the other thing. It's like, then they go and they're judging the man, right? Like they, and, and right. then, and then, so like, they'll be talking shit about the man or whatever to their kids because they do that. Right. And like, what ends up happening is, if the child is like, say the child is a boy who's going to grow up to be a man, what is he learning? He's learning like, oh, men aren't reliable. I'm going to grow up to be a man, so I'm not going to be reliable. You know, I can't be trusted. You know, like all these things like become internalized. I was talking with a mom who was telling me this, you know, not too long ago, where she was like, yeah, there's a lot of single moms in our community, and you know, a lot of times like they want to talk shit about the father of their children. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Um, you have a son. Is this how you want your son to turn out? Like, because that's what you're, everything that you're upset about or whatever, you're not correcting it. You're just saying all the bad things. And then what's he going to grow up believing? He's going to end up doing the same be thing. going to be the guy who does exactly what happened to you. So exactly. You're not changing anything. You're just complaining. And it's a point of just totally blaming the other person. Right. Right. And and I know what it's like from the perspective of like, you know, the way that mom is probably thinking is like, you know, if I, if I tell you these things, maybe you won't do it. Like parents think that way all the time. Right. Where it's like, if I, if I tell you these things, maybe you won't do it. You won't fall into this trap. If I complain about men on Facebook, <laughs> my son won't become a, a narcissist. If I, if I nag you enough, maybe you'll like me. You know, like that's that's literally the logic that I see. It worked with your father. <laughs> <laughs> it worked with your father. <laughs> yeah, that that's a very interesting point because it's like that's all that is is an unwillingness to take responsibility. It's a, it's an like you said it's, earlier, it's an irrationality. You know, and it's, yeah, I don't I don't want to say it like a way like. Oh, men, w- women can't be rational, but women are definitely more in tune with their emotions and make decisions more emotionally first and then tend to justify those decisions rather than like um, a man will make a decision. We also make decisions emotionally, but we tend to uh, follow some sort of like logical reasoning to yeah, but, the decision. Yeah, but women, women are really good at deceiving themselves and they will make a decision emotionally, but justify it logically. You know what? You, you can't be the, the only one who's using sense. girl math. Yeah, using girl math. You, you can't be the only one who's good at deceiving yourself. We're good at deceiving ourselves too. You know what? This entire world is good at deceiving itself. That's how we're here, okay? And, and, and deceive okay, themselves so, just as good as but, women. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm a deceiver just better. like you. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Wait, it's, hang on. What's, it, the, what's the, the Tyler Fisher... That's sexist. <laughs> you know, you know who I'm talking about? No, the guy, the small guy, who's always like making the uh, oh, Tyler he's the man bun. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's like, you're 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 a bigot. You're racist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're supposed to wear a mask, but oh, okay, you're supposed to get vaccinated, but then that's that's uh, racist. Uh, hang on, you're a racist. <laughs> Got my checklist. Yeah, or, or he did a, he did another one. He did another one recently that was like, um, okay. It, it was like he had like you know like a little highlighter hair color or whatever, and um, he's like, okay, if you're white right now, if you're white, you just need to shut the fuck up, okay? You you do not have any right to talk about what's going on with like the Middle East or any of that. You you just need to be like our our black brothers and sisters in the East shows. Like the BLM uh, uh, Twitter, and he shows it's literally a parachuter and with the flag, the Palestinian flag, and it says we stand with Palestine. 
<laughs> I didn't know that they posted that. And he was right, like, yeah. I had no idea that they, I had no idea they had like literally the parachute. Not, not like, not just Palestinians. Like they were like, we're actually okay with the actual terrorism part. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Which is so ridiculous. And so he was Why like, is anyone surprised we, about that though, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, we stand with the, oh, that, that, oh, uh, uh, wait, uh, just, just, everyone's racist. Just, just everyone's racist. <laughs> yeah, this is good. He's fun. What were you going to say, Jess? Uh, I was just, I was just, uh, the solution to all the gossiping. Oh, yes. It's very, time. very practical. And some women are even aware that the solution is just to look at where you can take responsibility and to just stop participating in the gossiping. And, but it's. But also it's like that need for energy, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't, Problem. It's they're like you, addicted. That's they're why like, you look at a movie addicted. like game or a show like Game of Thrones or stuff like that. And it's all, it's drama based. You know what I mean? Not just like a drama, but like actual, like it's about the backstabbing and the this and the that. So you just look at why that's so popular. And it's because people are looking for that, that energy of that. So doing this process, you stop participating in that. And then you look at what practically do I need? And you can get, you still can get energy, but you don't need to get it in this unbalanced, destructive way. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's cool because with this community and the tools that we have, if there's issues happening at home simply doing the basics of this process alone you alone that will support whatever's going on even if you think that it's just the other person i guarantee you that on some level you're co-creating the issues going yeah, on you are 100 it doesn't mean that's your fault but you changing the points will support them to go out of that pattern because you go into the pattern and you're like blaming and then just holds the pattern in place. There's like no room to like, it's kind of like what we're seeing with the whole Palestine Israel thing. It's like, they're both on both sides. I saw a really great interview with uh slap Slava Zizek, you know, the, <laughs> you know, I like I like, oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I like how you turn to look at me. Like, as if I know how to pronounce his name. It's just, it's, 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 I have no fucking clue. So anyways, uh, uh, <laughs> let me do this a couple of times um but uh but he he had a really he, he's got some interesting points and, and uh he's getting really attacked right now because he's like he's not pro hamas but they're like making it like he is um uh when the fuck did i bring it up anyways i don't remember you were but, saying you were comparing how it's the same thing as with palestine and israel right? oh yeah his point his interesting point about it was both sides are an extreme point that are making it impossible. He's not really saying that like the Palestinian people who are kind of stuck in that situation, it's just like the Hamas side, the Israel side, they're both extreme sides that are making it like, they're fight feeding into the whole point, right? Making it totally impossible. There was another point. Oh, um, Cameron, can, can you just go back just a second to like, you know, I'm, pretend I am a woman, right? And okay, I, I have a wig, I'm, I have a Costco membership, pretend all of those things right are true about me and uh i just i do all the work in my home and like i want my husband to just do something like anything like that would be great if he would just get off his ass but i don't know what to say because like when i nag him that doesn't work and i've been nagging him for a while and you know nothing's changed uh when i stop nagging him he still doesn't do anything so i, I feel better about nagging because then at, at the very least I get to get that out, you know? So like, how am I co-creating this? Cause it doesn't matter whether I nag or don't nag. So, you know, my wife doesn't nag me and check it out. Look what I'm doing for her. In addition to all the other things that we are doing. Ooh, that looks like a sink. Look at that. That's just part of it. I'm totally redoing the entire bathroom. Oh. All right. Here's how you do it. Here's what she did. She goes in the bathroom. This was months ago. And she rips down all the wallpaper. Okay. And then she just mentions, oh, yeah, she wants to redo it. She's looking at wallpaper. Oh, it's like, you know, to get the wallpaper she wants, like, do we really want to do that? Like, it's just going back and forth. She was just telling me about that stuff, right? And then I end up redoing this office 
here at the ranch. Paint everything. It looks really nice. You guys should see it sometime. I mean, look at those bookshelves we made. Those are nice. See it sometime. I'm going to see it in like 10 days. Oh, I know. I meant everybody else. Oh. Um, it looks really nice in here now. It's like really comfortable. Before it was a very dingy, disgusting barn room. Anyways, so I do all that. And I've never really painted like walls and stuff before. I mean, I had, but you know, it wasn't like I ever took it on as a thing. So then, you know, once I'm done with that, she starts mentioning, we had a whole bunch of other stuff to do. So I had to build some things for, cause we have the event coming up. So I got, once I got all of that basic stuff done, then she was like mentioning about the bathroom. Like, um, I forget what she said, but I was like, you know, now that I, I know how to do all this, like I can do the bathroom. Now that seems easy compared to doing all this stuff. Right. And then she starts telling me her ideas about like, oh, you could have like a wooden, cause we have all, it's like all this tile in there. And like the vanity is all tile. So I don't have a picture of it, but that same wood I used for the sink, the sink countertop, I'm putting that over the tile for the we have two separate, like a vanity. And then like the vanity with the sink, that's like two separate ones. Right. So I'm mm -hmm. putting wood over that thing. Right. And I'm like taking it on. Right. So I'm just saying like this whole thing of like, get your husband to get off his ass. It's like, he doesn't see that it's something he wants to do. You know what I mean? Like for you, you know, and it's like, there's no appreciation between each other. You know, and all she has to do is be like, oh, that looks really good. That's a good job, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah. You think that's good? You really, you think that's good? Watch this. Wait till you see this, all right? And I'm like learning shit. Yeah, I didn't know how to do anything about fucking sinks and countertops. And like, I took that whole cabinet off. I took the old sink off. I repainted the counter, the, the cabinet, right? Like everything, right? We're repainting it, painting the walls, the ceiling, everything. It's already looking better, right? And, uh, like the valve that the shutoff valve for the cold water is leaking. Right. So I'm like, when you turn it off, so I just drop the main water. I'm like, Hmm, how do I fix that? So I'm learning how to fix that thing. You know, I'm having fun. Go, so I'm going, hey. guys need, what, what's the problem? Like these guys don't want to do anything. Like, I just want to play video games. I don't play video games. Cause I don't want my son to play video games. I mean, they can play some video games, but you know, they're not playing like fucking. What are the video, video games? games? Yeah. Just... But it's like from like the 1990s, like freaking. Wait, plays chess with me oh That's yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they haven't played any real like they used to play lemmings and stuff you know but now it's like they're just playing chess all the time that's yeah, like yeah. right yeah so that's fun. That's my i guess my game. point was just like this whole idea of like you can't get your husband to do anything it's like it's because you i don't know it's it's, it's not that it's the woman's fault it's just the guy doesn't have any purpose and so like for me i have a real purpose and then it's like okay i can fit this into that Versus I don't have any purpose. I just feel bad. Let me just go and like entertain myself, you know? And like a lot of couples, like they're, they're the way that they, it's like, they don't create anything. They're just like, let's just watch sports and Netflix. Yeah. Nothing wrong with watching some Netflix or watching some sports every once in a while, or even on a regular basis, but that can't be your only point of your relationship. Yeah. Like let's go to work and survive and then go out to eat and watch Netflix. And it's like, yeah. You're, what are you creating in this world? Like, and then by doing that, you're just allowing all the other shit to happen. Yeah. You know, the people who are doing all the shit in the world, they're creating it, you know? And so why aren't we creating, you know, and it can be as simple as starting to create something, you know, in your house. But um, yeah, I think another point too, is the women gossip about their husbands in their mind. They're constantly oh, talking. Oh, snap. Hold up. Hold up. Wait. And I mean, the man's doing it too, I'm sure. I mean, hold I up. Hold up. This hypothetical woman says, she says, I don't talk to anybody about my husband. What do you mean talking about gossip about my husband? In their in head. My yeah, in their yeah. minds. Oh, That's yeah. It's not fair. It's not fair. I can't control Actually, it. I'll tell you something really cool. The other night, because yeah. generally right now, like I've explained before, Caius is he's getting close to that age where he won't need only Katie, but now she's mostly focused for him for bedtime. So I do the older kids bedtime generally. Mm -hmm. Um, so the other night it was like close to bedtime. I think it was bedtime or something. And Seneca, she's talking to me and she goes, Hey Cam, she goes, you know, Katie really likes you. And I was like, really? And she goes like, yeah. And she goes, she likes you a lot because you do hard stuff. And I was like, Oh, that's really cool. And I'm like, where'd that come from? Yeah. You know I mean? Like Katie must've said something or she's just picking up on it. I don't know. Yeah. But it's like, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. and it's not like um, we're special. 
you know, Absolutely. like we're just also, sharing, you guys are doing it too. Like we're all just sharing like what we're doing. We're not fucking special people. We're just looking at principles. We're holding ourselves to it. And what usually happens is the moment person faces the negativity, they don't stick to the principles, they compromise, and then they go off into fucking survival land. And then it's going to be years later. They're like, oh, I've got the drama. I've got all this. I've got all that. They don't know how to deal with it. And then they don't want to talk to us anymore because they know when they talk to us, we're like, so what happened to the principles? What happened to the point of standing up in this world and, sh- and changing the system? And it's like, oh, you're just talking about that again. It's like, well, you're tra- just want selfishly. You want me to solve your problem. But I'm telling you, that's how I solve these problems. Right. It's not that we don't have problems. It's just the little problems. We don't have those drama problems. You know, and that's very easy to solve. And you're never going to be able to solve it in the paradigm you're in. It's like, you can't take a relationship course and solve the drama problems. It's just like, why are you both participating in it? You have to solve the why so that you're not looking for that anymore. Because if you're like, my wife's not fucking watching a game of Thrones. We used to watch stuff like that. And guess what? We were doing a lot of drama shit. Not, I'm not blaming the game of Thrones. I'm saying we were looking for that. Yeah. And and another thing, another thing is women may say they don't like something a man is their man is doing but if they're getting energy out of reacting to what they're doing on a deep down level they actually love it because it's a reason to stir up energy and that's what we've been talking about this whole time women love energy women are all about the energy so on a conscious level they could be like oh i hate that he's doing that but if you're getting off on it then you're co-creating it because you're enjoying the internal reactions that you're accepting allowing for yourself. So you have to address those points for yourself. You have to let go of the reactions that you're participating in for whatever he's doing or not doing. And that's all, like I said, taking it back to yourself, taking responsibility of the point. And it's actually so much easier than you think. Because when you're in the middle of it, you seriously, genuinely think there's no way I couldn't react to this. You 100% feel justified. You're like, this thing is happening. I'm 100% justified in how I feel because he's doing this. He's creating this in me. But it could not be further from the truth. Like, you're creating it within yourself. And nobody can create a feeling in you. And you have to walk this process to support yourself, to stabilize and no longer participate in those things. And as you do that, there will be no reason for him to continue doing those things. He's not getting the energy that he wants to get from it. Let me interject, okay? But you have to start with the point of principles and we're here to change the system. You can't take Jess's advice as a woman and be like, oh, I'm just going to change my relationship over here by focusing on that and not participating in that energy. Eventually, you get to the point where you realize you'll always succumb because you don't have the point of like, okay, this is small potatoes compared to the actual freaking reality of what's going on in this world. And it doesn't mean every second of every day you're trying to solve the major problems. It's just then your little problems, you realize it's the same point and you're willing to let it go because you're like, well, how can I ever change this if I'm still holding on to this? But yeah. if you're only ever thinking about your small little world, the thing is something's going to happen in your life because the system is not effect is not designed to be best for all. That's going to put so much pressure on you or the other person or both of you that you're going to crack. You're not going to stand up to the pressure because you won't have that higher sense of purpose of like, okay, we can get through this because we are here to change the system. This is a test. You'll just succumb and be like, no, it's just about survival. Go get a fuck, you know, whatever. Like you'll, you'll, you will compromise. And then once you, it's like that apple of the tree of knowledge and good of evil, you know, once you take that apple bite, it's like, ah, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, let me just, let's just do it. You know? So like, yeah, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery apple. Another thing that I would encourage people to look at is how. But you got Aristotle reading Neothink over there yeah dang man this kid is advanced i mean i knew he's advanced but i know he's that advanced Uh, yeah um another thing you want to i've i've fully come to realize um because i don't know how much mitchell has shared about um poison ivy 
few weeks ago? I don't think he talked about it. No, okay, well, he, maybe he might have said he got poison ivy. I don't know if he talked about it on here. I think uh, I think he got a little tingle in your headphones there. Uh, They're headphones, um, not hair phones. In our in our grove, we have a a lot of poison ivy, and I, I deduced that from uh, from Mitchell's tales. Uh, pretty severe reaction to it, though. Okay, it, so it was it was the main issue was that. One, Pedro and Mitchell did not know how to identify poison ivy. So they were clearing a path in the forest and they didn't know that what they were touching was poison ivy. And the floor was covered in it, the ground. And then- They were like, do you want to do some Greco-Roman wrestling on the forest floor here? Sure. <laughs> no, it was like Pedro was barefoot in shorts <laughs> and Mitchell was- like Greco Roman exposed. wrestling. No, we understand. And yeah, we get it. <laughs> anyways, um, I the next day, Mitchell Mitchell wanted, or the same day. Mitchell Hold on, first of all, we saw the Pedro. pictures, and I'm not exaggerating, of Pedro out there with no shirt on doing push ups. Yeah. So wanted, I feel like Mitchell, they kind of brought this on themselves here a little bit. Mitchell wanted to take a bath because we've got this jacuzzi bathtub and it's awesome. And he had a long week. So he's like, let me just take a bath before. He's like, I found some cool herbs to put into the bath. Yeah, right, right. And he's like, we don't have any towels. Let me wipe off with these uh, leaves he, I found. He took a he took a, a hot bath, which pulled the oils out and then spread it everywhere. He was so, like, you know, drinking, drinking bath water is actually good for you too. Let me take a couple sips. Let me make a tincture. He made some homeopathic so, remedies. Anyways. Uh -huh. um through that situation both him and i were extremely supported to see the gift in the situation of like what are your reactions coming up what are the like how how can you effectively support yourself when walking through a situation like that like how can you take responsibility and different things like that and i see that is it's the same thing when you're looking at say something happens in your life with your partner you can see that as a gift in that moment where how am i reaction reacting internally how like becoming super aware of yourself in that moment where what what's coming up where am i reacting what's my immediate response to this and all of those things because you being able to process that will support that situation to not come up again. And you think, how is that possible? Because they started it. And it's like, well, you're no longer holding the pattern within you. Mm. And it's the same thing with the poison ivy. It's like Mitchell and I both were supported to walk through our reactions to the reaction to the poison ivy. Like so much was coming up. Like for me, caring for him, I realized how unequipped I was for a full body reaction to poison ivy. Like I didn't know, I didn't know any home remedies really. I was like, I, I, I had to do a bunch of research, ask, ask a few of my friends. And, and then it was and like- And now you're prepared almost, for whenever the kids get into it. Right. And it was almost a week later and I was like, it, so it, that happened on Sunday and it was like Thursday and we had our big fall festival that Saturday. And I was like, babe, I'm sorry. You need to go to the clinic. Like this is beyond my scope. He's sitting here with boils on his body. I'm like, I, like, I hey guys, uh, you want to talk about us? Uh, I know. <laughs> like, like one day he was full bed bound. I was like, I, I, there's well, so it was it exposed to me where I was not <laughs> prepared for a situation like that. Not yeah. only, you know, that's pretty logical. Beyond that, there's also any time that he would ask me for something because he legit needed support. What did I have any back chat of like, oh, do I have to? Can't you do it? Which didn't really come up because I've worked through a lot of those points. 
but I'm just giving examples of what could come up in this situation. And also one thing that did come up though, was a slight, a slight uncomfortable, like I was slightly, slightly disturbed by the rash itself. Just like, I almost didn't want to touch it. I was like, oh, like that, just like, I, like you I thought had, it was leprosy or something? Well, <laughs> right. I, can tell, I, <laughs> I can tell I was having a reaction to it mostly because I wasn't educated on it. I didn't know if it still had the oils in there and it would spread. Right. Mm -hmm. So deep down it was like, should I be touching this right now? You know, like, and, should I wear a mask? Should I not wear a mask? Uh, yeah. yeah. And so it was all of those things created different little points of emotional instability within me that was exposed to me. So now I could work through all of that. And like you said, now I'm more prepared to say the kids get into poison ivy, but also I did even more research and was like, well, what are some things that we could do to get rid of a lot of the poison ivy? Well, goats love poison ivy and it's actually very nutritious for them. So if we borrow- Only you knew somebody goats, with goats, man. If I we borrow our neighbor's goats or maybe get goats for a summer and just let them mow down all the, they, they'll eat buckthorn, they'll eat thistle, they'll eat poison ivy. And we got all three of those invasive plants on our property. So we could just nice. raise them in all the spots we needed. Hey, nice. Jess, what is your husband's name again? <laughs> Mitchell Snyder. More like Itchel Snyder. <laughs> but Hi, Jessica. Yeah. Hi, Max. Are you guys ready to wrap it up for today? We got that parenting all coming up in a little bit. Yeah. Guess. Yeah, this is good. I'm going to have good. a few words real quick, Maxie. We're about to end our podcast. So, would any of you like to play chess? <laughs> like, drink? You... I don't know if you guys know this, but Max really likes chess now. Really? Really? Is that so? I like playing no, Max and chess. Hadn't really noticed. It wasn't that obvious, Max. Hmm. Well, thanks, for Yeah, we can wrap this up. We can play some sarcastic. chess. That sounds good. But Drake, could we play chess today? We got some meetings and stuff to do, but maybe gonna... later. What about in the evening? Like when could when? Could we well, all... let's message him after that. We're done recording. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Aristotle. <laughs> can guess he sounds a lot like Caius. New Kais. baby. Him and Caius can talk to each other like. Yeah. 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 He literally speaks the same language as Caius. Wow, <laughs> that's so great. He, he's he's really into me. Because I... hey, we have a lot of books that so... have cows in them, and we had cows in our back pasture for a while. So now he's really into mooing, and he'll moo on command when we're reading a book, which is pretty cool. And 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 the neighbor's cow hears him as well. So like you guys can go back and forth with that big, what was that big cow's name? Do you remember the big bull? Oh, bull. Noble. Noble, Noble. Do you remember Noble, Cam? What happened to him? Well, they tried, they tried to butcher him, but he wouldn't get into the trailer and he broke he broke all their stuff. And so they're like, okay. So they waited till the next year. Um, they got him in the trailer the next year, but they waited a whole year. They were like, no. oh, let's so he's, so now he's no bull. He's yeah, not a bull. No That's bull. like, I, you're, you're actually, I was beautiful. He was like, beautiful. literally. Yeah. Talk about your new cow. And we ended, we actually ended up getting some of the ground beef from Noble. It was tasty. Oh, nice. Nice. I, that would be like a bull to like sire your cows. That, that was a big bull. Anyway, uh, let's try this up. I was going to see the one day. What? Are you having another meeting? Today? Yes. What is it? We have our parenting call coming up shortly. So but we'll, we'll, we'll message we're you. Gonna, again. We're just going to end the, the live stream and end the recording. And then uh, we can uh, keep talking. Okay, Max? Okay. Okay. Say bye to everybody. Bye. Bye.